Okay, guys. Um, I'm here with my dog, Poppy, the Great Dane. She's not particularly um, happy right now because, um, I don't know, it's raining and she hasn't done any exercise or anything. So she might whine and fuss and carry on. Um, ignore her. I just thought what I would do is uh, do a little demo work. I had some folks send me some um, drawings for critique and uh, I sent back some things to them and I thought, well, you know, let's just do a, a recording and show you a few things that I was talking to a couple of people about. So the first thing that I was noticing on people's work was there was a tendency not to overlap this top orange over the bottom one. In the drawings, they tended to just have, you know, um, the bottom orange and the top orange was just sort of um, touching right there, a little touch. And I can see up in the, in the reference photo how it would be hard to notice how much overlap there is. And um, just make note that when you have something in front of, on top of another object, to pay close attention to that overlap. And sometimes those reference photos lie. Um, there's so much contrast here that it, the back end, the back side of that orange, the bottom orange drops off into super dark shadow. So we think it's not there, but it actually extends a little bit farther. So be aware of that when you're working from photo references that sometimes that contrast is, uh, will throw you off and really kind of use your logic that that bottom orange really is extending up and behind the top orange a little bit more. So when I have this little soft little edge of the bottom orange, the mind continues that up into the shadow and uh, it, it informs me that this is a larger circle than r right up to here, right? I hope that makes sense. That continuation thing in the mind is really important. So overlap, very important. Overlap your tangerine with the bottom orange. Make sure that that is showing in your drawing that, that it's a nice, sensation that this guy is sitting on top of the bottom orange by having just the bottom orange just a teeny bit lighter in the shadow we can see that that guy is on top of that orange um i keep saying over and over again that when you're working with a photograph photographs always lie and you have to use your um your logic your experience and sometimes your imagination to make the drawing more understandable than what the photograph might actually be. Um, the other thing that's really important is making sure that you have a cast shadow under this top orange that says the orange has roundness, it's on top of this guy, and it's casting a shadow onto the lower form. And this guy also is casting a shadow onto that orange. Um, core shadows, making sure the core shadow is strong enough to create the sensation, the illusion that there is, um, that it's round. And when you go in there, you really, I'm grabbing a nice darker pencil, soft pencil. When you're building up your tones in your drawing, Really go slowly and softly and build those tones up with layers. And so on this guy here, I've been working with it for a little bit and I want to go back in and strengthen this core shadow a little bit more. Now, notice I'm going to just reiterate, I'm leaning my pencil over, 
I'm holding it way at the back of the pencil and I've got my hand up uh, off of the drawing so I don't smear things all over the place and I can um, if I support my hand either on a cover sheet on the paper or on a on some sort of a mall stick then I can use I can keep a very light pressure on my pencil point and not dig it in and put too much graphite down too soon so notice what I'm doing Look at that, very, very light layering of a little tiny bit more dark. And I'm trying to keep it very soft edged and just bring in a little at a time. Looking at my reference, you see, you can barely see um, the layering of that tone because I'm going at it very slowly, very lightly. This is how you get it to, to glow. If you are using too strong of a pencil mark, it will be all um, stripey and it won't, it'll just kind of not glow too much. Okay, so I've strengthened that a little bit and I've got my tangerine going on here. I think this reflected light right there is a little too strong, so I'm going to put a little layer of tone over that. Maybe push this core shadow just a little bit darker right in this area. Um, I am not, you know what I've set up for your photo is um, fake fruit. And this little, this little guy right here has, you know, been traveling around with me for ages and there's just this sort of little scratch on it. Um, you don't have to add that stuff in. You don't have to be, um, you know, put everything in that you see. You can leave stuff out. And also, now I did mention that Sometimes it's a lot better to just kind of leave detail like maybe the the texture of the fruit out and just focus on the forms. And overall, when you're first starting out, I do suggest adding being really focused on the on the forms, really getting the shadows correct and the overall proportions correct. Don't worry about textures that are really um, subtle like the peel you know lemon peel texture orange peel texture but if you were to go in and put some texture in a soft pencil and on um, in these cases the the orange peel and such just soft little taps of the pencil will do a good job of creating some of that texture but don't go overboard just keep it really as subtle as you can here and there and don't don't overdo it subtle works okay uh let's see there's a lot of reflection in my bowl and i wanted to just work on this while you're looking at the camera for a few minutes and there's actually the reflection of the lemon this guy is reflecting in here but it's it's actually a dark reflection so that lemon creates this shape like the back end of the curve of the lemon in here and then there's the reflection of the table into the bowl and it's pretty light but it's not nearly as light as what I have here so I'm going to tone it down and hopefully you can see, let me actually zoom in a little bit more, like so. Um, I'm really going at this slowly.
and sometimes when you're trying to keep it really subtle if you go back and you grab a harder pencil so long as you're being very conscientious of holding it at the back of the pencil way back there at a steep angle you can create a subtle gradation and build it up gently with a harder lead um, and it's a little bit smoother and so I'm also going to do that along the edge here of my bowl. Uh, this pencil I'm using right now is a 2H and just I can come around here and soften that tone in that bowl. It needs to be a little bit darker. And you see in the reference right there is a little gleam. So we want to have that gleam there in order to have it show as very bright. We need to darken the value up to it. And let's see, I need to darken most all of this rim as it goes around. There goes Poppy. She's crying. Oh boy. Life is hard when you're a great Dane. Oh golly. Okay. Uh, do that. And then to get the gleam in, I'm going to um, press a little edge on my kneaded eraser and get in right in there and take out some value right at that spot where it's gleaming and if the eraser like mine did was a little bit too wide and I took out a little too much then I can just very carefully come back in and put some darks up against that gleam where it needs to be a little more contrasty in order for the gleam to, to show, okay? If, uh, if you need to, if you have one of these teeny little um, pen type erasers, I'm clicking up, that has that little, <laughs> hi Poppy, hi Poppy. Oh, let me zoom out real quick. Poppy, can you put your face in there? Come here, Poppy, come here. Oh no, somebody wants me to do something. I'm going to go the other way. Come here. You're not going to do it, are you? Okay, forget about it. Um, you can use one of these little pen type erasers, which are really handy, and get in there and erase a little gleam where you need it. and work it that way. So guys, it's really important that um, you take time. Uh, I remember when I was in junior high, my art teacher showed me how to um, do a smooth gradation with my pencil. I was just amazed. So really take some time to practice trying to make a smooth tone with your pencil. Notice how, oops, I gotta get it in the camera 
sorry. Make a smooth tone with the, can with the pencil. So again, I'm holding it way back on the back end of the pencil with the pencil leaning way over. And I'm going up and down, up and down as evenly as I can. Okay. Now, if an up and down a, um, mark making works for you, that's good. A lot of times I start out with more of a diagonal. Same thing applies. Hold the pencil at the back and feather weight on the tip of your pencil. Feather weight. And um, you can speed it up a little bit, but really you just have to lean it way over so that the length of the pencil tip is on the paper rather than the point and that will get a smoother um, patch of tone for you so uh, i hope that helps out let's see um, i think the other thing that um, i noticed with a lot of the drawings that were um, being sent in was leaving outlines and that's a real no-no uh, make sure you dissolve anything that even halfway appears as an outline, dissolve that with tone and get rid of that outline feeling. Um, there was one that came through that there was a little bit of a white outline, like, okay, put the, put the tone on the tangerine and I put the tone in the bowl and I'm not quite sure what to do with where those two tones meet. So I'm gonna leave a blank line, right? It's like a, a white halo there instead of a dark outline. So um, don't worry, tone against tone is exactly how we read the world, right? That's the way it is. So go ahead and put the shadow behind the tangerine right up against the tangerine and let that division between um, gray and black tell us where that tangerine edge is. Okay, now the only thing that, um, you know, that has an outline is a, 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 an actual design on the bowl. So you want to keep that nice and strong so that it tells us that it's a ceramic bowl. But um, otherwise, yeah, practice, practice working on very soft, even tone application. And when you work on a certain area and you move on, try to knit those two pieces together so that you don't have a big glump of dark in the middle. And then as you come up with another layer of, you need to lay another layer of dark in. Often if you go another direction, it will help smooth it out even more. And sometimes when you're working in round things, a circular motion can be helpful. Again, featherweight on your pencil tip. This is key, featherweight, very lightweight, build up the tone layer by layer by layer. And if I keep going over this little area right here, I can make it darker and darker, but it's nice and smooth and even. Okay. I would suggest making a bunch of rectangles on your um, on your paper in your sketchbook and try your best to fill the rectangle with tone, as smooth as possible. Go to the next rectangle and practice.
And over time, you'll find that it becomes easier and easier to do that nice and smooth more quickly. At first, you do a rectangle and you're trying and you get striations like this, right? But as you practice, you will get more facility with the muscles in your hand to lightly go over an area on your drawing so that it's nice and smooth. The other thing that you'll learn too is by going back over, it fills in those gaps between marks and becomes smoother. All right, so I would say fill up pages of little rectangles like this and just practice doing this and you'll get better and better. All right, you guys, have fun and um, keep up the good work.